surprised to learn that this huge rock established a very solid connection with royalty just over a hundred years ago. Find out why and which county I'm in in just a moment. On today's show, we're helping a couple find a rural home where they can expand their business and surround themselves and their family in nature. There's plenty that appeals. We like. I'm glad. We like. I thought you would. It's just a question of how best to make use of it. What are you going to do with all that? Lots of chickens. chickens. <laughs> Today, I'm in Cumbria, and right in the heart of the Lake District is this, the Bowder Stone, weighing some 2,000 tonnes and standing 30 feet tall. Now, the stone itself came to the attention of the royal family in 1910, when King Edward VII died. His sister, Princess Louise, who was then president of the National Trust, who owned this area, thought it would make a fitting tribute to her deceased brother. And, as you're about to see, this is not the only natural wonder that Cumbria has to offer. Situated in the most northwestern corner of England, that the desirability for living within the Lake District National Park will mean you pay an extra 20% for your country home. Now heading north, as you come out of the Lake District National Park, property prices do come down, especially as you approach the Scottish border. So whereabouts are today's house buyers looking to head? Let's meet them and find out. Russian-born Natalie and Guy, who's Israeli, have had homes in the United States and in Israel, which is where they met 21 years ago. But Guy's job as a technical manager in the medical industry brought them to the UK and they've lived here for the past six years in this four-bedroom new build in Warrington. The movers confirm that they're keen to make this country home. But since they arrived, their family has expanded and they're craving a less complicated life closer to nature. When we moved here, we had just one kid. You know, we were very, very mobile. Now we have three kids. Now you want to leave the house. It all takes longer and that's why we want to be, you know, closer to... to, to the things that we want to do, meaning the outdoors. Mm -hmm. So um, instead of getting everyone in the car and, and driving somewhere, we want to be able to just leave the house and, and, and do that freely with the kids. It's just very, very busy. It's from one thing to another. And um, we just really, really need the quiet now. And when we switch off, we need, we need the switch off because that, that's something that's really missing mm -hmm. at the moment. Yeah. Natalie and Guy are looking forward to embracing some of the rural pursuits they'll have access to in the countryside and are hoping they'll have a positive influence on their family life. We would like to do more things together. We would like to grow veggies. We would like to have, you know, um, um, chickens and, and mm. um, I like bees as well. Um, you know, <laughs> Natalie is not keen, but I do. We want, um, you know, the kids to deal less with computers and, and more with outdoors. I think you can, if, if you have this uh, rural house with, with things to do outside, you can just get them out and do something together. Yeah, instead mm. of going straight to the laptop, why not go out and, and feed the chickens? Yeah. And then I'm so, sure they'll enjoy it as well. Yeah. Natalie, who is a graphic designer, runs a business creating products for children's bedroom interiors. And she's hoping the move will offer her the scope to scale it up. The business started in 2009 and it started small with a few products and few orders a week and at this time to cope we really need to expand and have more space so we will be looking for a workshop, a good size, um, yes and then this will solve quite a lot of uh, our issues. <laughs> With his work in the medical industry, Guy's on the road a lot, travelling throughout the country, which means they could be flexible about where they choose to move. In spite of this, they've singled out Cumbria as their county of choice. I love Cumbria. I just think that it's, you know, it's, it's a beautiful place. Um, so um, for us, it was a no-brainer. We're not worried very much about the weather, are we? No, we're That's not. That's another thing. We, a lot of people say that. Uh, we, oh, we, it's we, cold north and rain. And My reply is always, I love the weather. We came from a, a warm a and humid again. place, so we love it here, compared to another place that it's just sunny all yeah. year round and you just you take it for granted. So here you can really appreciate nice days. The last thing to establish is the figure they have in mind for a Cumbrian countryside home. 
Our budget for the move is between 400 and 500 thousand pounds. We're focusing our search to the north of the county, and because of the travel Guy does with his work, we're staying within a half-hour drive of the M6. I'm catching up with them to learn a little bit more about their move. So welcome both of you to, well, beautiful Cumbria. Now, what's prompted this move? The outside space is the big thing for you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's really been important for us, um, for us personally and, and, and for Natalie's business. Mm -hmm. We want um, more space for our family. We want to be able to go outside and do things with the kids. Yeah. So it's, it's really, really important all around. Give my childhood to really remember, I suppose. Yeah. 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 Now, this business, this is going to have an impact on the houses we can show you. So what sort of space do you require for your work? We do need a nice size workshop studio. So how big does this studio or room need to be? I, I, I would think that it should be um, roughly around the 30 to 50 square meters. I mean, it should be good size uh, room or rooms. All right, so that's a pretty big room or studio, isn't it? Now, what about the house itself? You've got, what, three children. How many bedrooms are you after? Four bedrooms and up. That's one for you two and one each for the children. But maybe a spare room as well. It's being more towards the rural side, you know, we're going to have family coming yeah. around and, and mm. we, we, we do need some more space, um, you know, to accommodate um, guests. So what about outside, the surroundings of the house? We'd like to have a, about an acre, around an acre. An acre? Yeah. Okay. And... Uh, could, would... be, could be more, but... Um, oh, more? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I would say... Um, he likes yeah, potential. Acre, um... <laughs> because you're looking for a house with some land, it could be a converted barn or a farmhouse. Yes or no? And not as much farmhouse or barn. We're looking more to have a, some kind of historic house with uh, Victorian or yeah. Georgian, right. something like that. It's very, very important for us to have high ceilings so, you know, we don't feel cramped. It is quite a bit different from what we have in our minds, but I suppose you can be smitten by a space on the yeah. spot. You can be. You know, sometimes you open the door and you just think, well, well that's not what uh, I had in mind, but yeah. I love yeah. it. But wow, yeah. yeah. All right, just finally, what about budget? Our budget is, is um, 400,000 stretching all the way to 500,000 pounds. OK, and that, well, that big gap between four and five is, what, spending money on the house if it needs... Need yes, it. we take into account that we might need to convert a workshop into a studio, so that okay. will take some budget and perhaps uh, doing some things in the house. We are prepared to do some work right. to bring it to where we want it to be. OK, well, look, we've got three very different properties lined up for you. Let's get started, shall we? Yeah. yeah. Let's... With a maximum budget of £500,000, Guy and Natalie are looking for a spacious period home with four bedrooms and at least an acre of land. For Natalie's business, they'd like a large workshop or at least the potential to create one. And they're hoping to be within half an hour's drive of the M6 for Guy's work. We found three attractive and distinctly different Cumbrian homes for them to view. And after we've had a look around, I'll be getting them to have a guess at the price. One of them will be our mystery house, which could offer them an unexpected side income. So what do the children think about this big move to the countryside? We promised them pets, so <laughs> that's Driving a bit of a distraction. What kind of pets? Well, I, I think that their idea of pets are it's pretty Goldfish. much uh, um, um, <laughs> rabbits and... <laughs> Our idea of, of animals is, is more towards the chickens and bees. So pet chicken like, and pet bee. Yeah, yeah. Pet like, bee. Your, your kids must be raring to come to the countryside. <laughs> we begin our search nine miles east of the M6 junction at Penrith in the hamlet of New Biggin, which sits in the Eden Valley. Two miles away is Temple Sowerby, an attractive village with one or two amenities centred around a village green. It also has a primary school, which would be handy for Guy and Natalie's three children. Our first house, a four-bedroom Victorian home, set well back from the road, is a five-minute drive away. So, the first property we're going to have a look around is an old hunting lodge. 
looks Good. very impressive outside. Well, Victorians did build impressive buildings, didn't they? You can expect to see high ceilings inside, lots of original features. So, want to look inside? Definitely, yep. yes. Let's go in. Let's go. This former hunting lodge dates back to the 1800s and was originally one of the buildings belonging to nearby New Biggin Hall. So come on in, straight into the kitchen. Uh-huh. What do you think? Um... Quite cosy. Cosy's not always a good thing. Yeah, um, cosy meaning that it's not on the big size, no. uh, but it is quite well proportioned. Yeah, it's uh, it, the layout could be changed if we wanted. It is possible to make this a bigger kitchen. I understand where you're coming from. You might want to reconfigure this kitchen, but I think as you'll see throughout this house, with a few further reception rooms, you could adapt this very well to be a family home. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So let's have a look at one of the reception rooms. Just see here. Yeah. So this is one of the two reception rooms, this side of the house. Yeah, that's a beautiful fireplace. All the fireplaces you'll see around this house, and there are a number of them, they're all original and working, which is what you mm. want from a country house, isn't it? Quite big windows, yeah. which is very good. What about the room proportions? It's again on the cosy side. There's lots of rooms here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've got this as a formal living room or drawing room, if you like. You've got formal dining room on the other side of the hallway. You've got the kitchen you just walked through, and then you've got another, what they call a snug, that side. Mm -hmm. So. If you want an older property, you're going to have four more rooms. Let's go to the master bedroom. Right. Okay. It's pretty clear that what we've seen so far isn't quite measuring up for Guy and Natalie. Let's see if the rest of the house offers the dimensions thereafter. Upstairs, there's a family bathroom and three double bedrooms. And up another set of stairs, there's a cosy twin bedroom in the attic. So, the master of four bedrooms in total. Nicely done, again. The other bedroom, the other side of this built-in wardrobe, that has a small ensuite shower and loo. But the owners use this as their master just because they, well, they prefer the view and the light that comes in here. What do you think, Natalie? I think it's a little bit smaller than what we have in mind. OK, you want big rooms, don't you, by the sounds of it? Yes, yeah. yes. For our buyers, space is clearly an issue with this house. But outside, there is a roomy garage that could be converted into a workable space for Natalie's business. And there's also a large, attractive garden. All in all, you get an acre. The plot is an acre. So you've got room for... Well, you've got room for your chickens and the likes, and, well, you can kick a football around up here, couldn't you? Yeah, it's a really, really nice plot, and it's, again, well-maintained and, and quite impressive size. So, after this brief tour around the property, how much do you think it's on the market for? Um, based on the plot size and the house, I would guess that it's around £350,000. Natalie? I would think, uh, not taking into account the location which we're not familiar with, I would think three ninety. You mentioned you're not familiar with the location. It kind of shows that this house is on the market for offers around £495,000. Location. <laughs> we were quite a bit off. Well, look, go back into the house, have a little chat amongst yourselves, and I'll meet you outside whenever you're done. Just below our couple's maximum budget at £495,000, this attractive Victorian property has three reception rooms, four bedrooms, and plenty of original period features. Outside, there's a one acre garden and a garage that Natalie could use as a workshop for her business. Right, this is a good size. There is another room over there. And I see there is power. Yeah. And concrete floor, which is very good. That's fine, yeah, um, absolutely fine. Yeah, very good potential. Well, the house is beautiful from the outside. It's situated in the wonderful mature gardens, uh, which are low maintenance. I think for the kids it will be uh, um, nice. I think that the, the you know, surroundings and, and, and are pretty much what we wanted. As we came inside, um, I thought that the house is well presented and, and well kept. It's just that the rooms were a bit small for what we want. The workshop caters to our business just perfectly, really. We could work from that space. It definitely covers what we need.
It is a lovely family home, but for us, it really comes back to the size of the space. We are looking for, I suppose, more grand feel of the house. Overall, a uh, very nice property um, for the right people. Um, that, unfortunately, won't be us. Look at this. The sun's oh, come out. It's beautiful, it's isn't it? Beautiful, yeah. So, have you seen enough inside the house? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. On to the next one. Then. Yeah. yeah. In the heart of the Lake District National Park is the Honister Pass, one of the highest and steepest mountain passes in Cumbria. This desolate but hauntingly beautiful place was once busy with teams of men, extracting sought-after Honister Green Slate from deep within Fleetwith Pike, the imposing 2,000-foot fell that towers over the pass. This desirable natural resource has been mined here for hundreds of years. But its peak was during the 19th century, when more than 100 men were employed here, and production reached 3,000 tonnes a year. Removing the slate from this precipitous location was a costly exercise, and the arrival of cheaper alternatives from abroad eventually brought activity here to a standstill, and for years, the site remained derelict. But in 1997, a local entrepreneur bought the mine and opened it to the public to help keep the history of this important local industry alive. Barry Surtees is the mine's marketing manager. So what makes the slate here in Honister so special? Well, our slate is totally unique in the United Kingdom. In fact, in the world, it will last roughly 300 plus years. OK, so, so it's got this, much more longevity. Yeah. Is, why, why is that? Because it, is it more dense? It's or? dense and it's very hard and it's very resistant. Right. Um, it's been in that mountain for 450 million years, so it's going to last a bit longer. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> We're lucky that our slate's so good that even the Queen has it on a roof at Buckingham Palace. Yeah. Absolutely, and it's on all the stores in Regent Street, so right. all the main big buildings in London have our slate on the roof. What some fairly exalted customers, then. The slate was formed from layers of volcanic ash that has been compressed over hundreds of millions of years and comes from three huge seams within Fleetwith Pike. So, Barry, we're surrounded by mines then, are we? Yeah, absolutely. Up there, there's uh, ten miles of tunnels in that mountain. Goodness me. What are you... Inside that, that face, if you like? Yeah, ten miles of tunnels. I can see bits of timber along this track here, but does that mean there was a railway here? Yeah, absolutely. In Victorian times, they got so fed up with dragging slate up and down this mountain that they actually built railways in the most extraordinary places. <laughs> this was one railway, which went up to the end here. Yeah. And then at the other side, you can't believe, but they built three railways right to the top of the mountain. It's quite extraordinary. What did they do before the railways? Because mining obviously predates the railways. So what they used to do, actually, was bring the slate down on sleds which is quite a dangerous occupation yeah. to do because it's a hell of a weight, a heck of a weight. Um, and some of the Victorian visitors of the day would come up here in charabangs and realise that there was something happening. So the miners would come sledding down and the visitors were so impressed they would throw them coins, uh, which was a nice learner for them. But, of course, the mine manager wasn't very happy about that. But it certainly provided a lot of entertainment for people coming up here. I mean, these sleds that you talk about, you load that up with slate. Mm. How on earth do you control it? I don't know. I mean, I, they didn't, didn't have any health and safety, and I think they just got on with it. Just let gravity just, do, just let do its work. Gravity do its work. These men were fearless. They really were They're totally them. fearless. To help give visitors an idea of the extreme conditions these men endured, a cable walkway known as a Via Ferrata has been set into the mountain following the vertiginous route the miners took each day. Rain, hail or shine. Joe Weir, one of the mine owners, is going to show me the ropes. So, what's the technique here? I'm tied in. Really, there only is one thing that you have to remember. Right. When you come to the junction, just take one of them off, and then you, with the same hand, you come back to that. All oh, right, so there's always... So there's always one clip one clipped in. You can't be standing there with two carabiners. Got you. All so, right. can we go there? Yeah, we can have a go if you're up for it. Of course you're not frightened of heights? Not frightened of anything, no. my friend. Excellent. Via Ferrata is Italian for Iron Road, and it's a system that was used during the First World War to move troops and equipment safely over mountainous terrain. I tell you what, I wouldn't fancy carrying a load of slate on my back coming up here, would you? I would not, no. 
This circuitous route made getting home each night difficult, so a lot of miners stayed on the mountain all week in stone boffies that they built themselves, the ruins of which can be seen from the path. Well, Joe, it's, it's an amazing insight into just how hard the life of Victorian miner was up here. Yeah. But I must say, it's, it's also a lot of fun to get involved in. Thanks very much. It's a pleasure, no problem. Thanks for coming. No, I'll come again, don't worry about that. Back to our property search, and we're heading 30 miles north to the rural hamlet of Parton Wigton, which is a 25 minute drive from the M6. For provisions, the appealing village of Kirkbride lies eight miles north of the property, where amenities include a post office and a sports club. Our second offering is just down the road, and it's Georgian, one of our couple's preferred architectural styles. So, it's property number two. We've gone bigger and hopefully better. And what do you think? Wow, yes, wow, wow. big smile on the face. And yep. wows. Me yes. too. Three wows. Good. <laughs> Why? Because it's big? It's, it's big. Georgian. It looks right from the outside, spot on. Um, yeah. Very, very excited. I like the elevated position of the house. Yeah. It's watching over the valley. I, it, it, it absolutely spot on. And also, the Georgians were massive show-offs. Look at me and my big house. And you would, wouldn't you? And sure. yes, we, I suppose, as well. <laughs> yeah, well, <wow. laughs> yeah. this could be you. Yeah. So these are great impressions, first off. Yeah. It'll get better inside, let me show you. Ooh. All right. The property, which is thought to date back to the 1820s, has been renovated over the last 15 years by the current owners, who have managed to retain many of the original features. So, a rather grand entrance hall. Yes, wow. definitely. We like. I'm glad. I thought you would. Let's start off with the kitchen. It's big. Wow. Mm -hmm. Good. Now then. Wow, that is oh, big. Nice, yeah. <laughs> that is big yes. and, and that is very, very nice. I wanted to say it's absolutely spot on, but it's, it's probably above that. Well, so it's exceeding your expectations, yeah. that's great. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You like history, don't you? You like old yes, properties. Yeah. Now, if you look at this, the detailing of this corner scene, which is original, it's just something else, isn't it? It's beautiful. Well, if you like this room, yes. you'll probably like the next one. All right. So, rather elegant living room. Yes, nice. absolutely beautiful. Magnificent features. Yeah. So much detail. This is way, way beyond my expectation, um, to be honest. So I'm, I'm, I'm a bit, um, um, you know... Lost for words, but it sounds a bit. Um, it's, it's really, really nice. Adjoining the living room is an attractive formal dining room. And below, there's a large cellar, handy for extra storage. Upstairs, beyond the light-filled landing, the four double bedrooms have large windows offering great views across the countryside. Three are served by a family bathroom, and the master has an ensuite. So, here we are. What do we think? It's lovely. Again, beautiful. Yeah. Big, um... Good proportion, plenty of room around the bed, um, big size room, which yeah. is excellent, and lovely, lovely fireplace. It's just beautiful, and the views here are amazing. Yeah. Mm. It's a great house, isn't it? It's, it's, you know, from the moment we saw this house from the outside, it got to a very, very high level, and mm. it's just staying there. It's absolutely superb. We, we wanted a grand house, and that's what it is. Yeah, just that. Mm. Now, you did say you wanted a studio, somewhere to yeah. work from home. We've got something in mind for that. Follow me. Well. So far, this house really seems to deliver what our couple are looking for. And I have a feeling they won't be disappointed by what's on offer outside. Apart from roughly three quarters of an acre of land, where there's more than enough room for Guy to keep his chickens and bees, there's also a 1,400-square-foot workshop that has Natalie's name written all over it. So, you're after somewhere big enough where you could work, maybe as a studio. Right, this is... Proper, proper size. Yeah. <laughs> you can do anything you want in here, really. Yeah. Mm. 
This is just for the studio sort of stuff and storage. On top of this, you've got a self-contained home office. Your empire could go and go and go here. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, we ask for quite a big outbuilding workshop and this is even bigger. Let's go outside and start thinking about how much this is all going to cost. Mm. So the house takes on a completely different look from this side, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes, very different. Which isn't unusual for Georgian property, actually. Mm -hmm. it's, it's different in a good way. It's nice. It's yeah. as if you're having, you know, two different houses. In one. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, you almost have got a few different houses. And you've got that huge double garage there. Above that, there's a converted playroom. And then next door, what's thought to be maybe servants' quarters, you've got self-contained two-bed accommodation here. Oh. It's... Huge. It is very impressive. It is very impressive. So how impressive is it as regards to price? How much do you think this house is on the market for? Well, I would say 500. 500,000 pounds? Hope. Are you hoping? <laughs> yes. Right, OK. What do you think, Guy? I would think that it's, um, based on the size and, and the way it looks, it's got to be over budget. Um, I would go for £520,000. OK. Well, it's on the market for offers around £525,000. So you're not far off. Well, this is your opportunity to go and have a good look around and really enjoy yourselves. All right? Yeah. Yep. Let's go. Catch you later. This elegant Georgian home is above budget at £525,000, but the owners are open to offers. It has a large kitchen, two reception rooms and four double bedrooms. There's also an adjoining self-contained cottage which offers two more bedrooms, perfect for visiting family. Outside, there's around three quarters of an acre of land, an office and a large workshop. Mind the steps here. Wow. That's proper space. Quite amazing. This is really, really big. Wow. That is a good size room. My first reaction was, wow. And it continued all the way through every room that we went to. It's a nice, nice house. Quite amazing. I'm very, very impressed. The features, right when you just open the door, you can see the ceilings, the, the cornices, all the wonderful original features. The surrounding area is, is beautiful. I feel that we can just, you know, go out and, you know, walking and cycling together as family. So the opportunities are absolutely endless. I can see the children enjoy the outside. I can see them playing lots of hide and seek and not finding each other. The size of the workshop is absolutely amazing. We wanted a big workshop, but it's even, you know, bigger than what we um, uh, thought we need. This means that Natalie will be able to, uh, you know, grow the business um, even further. We can see this as our family home. For many years, it can cater to our business's needs and as far as I can see, beyond. I didn't know which door to stand outside because it's probably so big, but you managed to see everything up here. Good, yes. Yeah, it took a while. This um, is a massive place. It is massive, yeah. Two happy customers? It's wonderful. Yeah, very yes. happy. Love it. Good. Beyond happy. Beyond happy. Beyond that happy. sounds good to me. Let's go back. It's the second day of our property search, and with a budget of £500,000, Guy and Natalie are leaving the Cheshire town of Warrington and looking to the open wilds of Cumbria to find space to expand a business and discover a more wholesome way of life for their family. Still to come, our final house offers an unexpected bonus. What do you think if I was to tell you that well, that's included? Oh, so it has lots of pluses. Well, I think we're going to take a gamble today with the mystery house, as property number two seems to be pretty hard to beat. First off, it's a farmhouse, something that Natalie and Guy said they weren't particularly keen on looking at. And second of all, well, it's 40 minutes drive to the M6 motorway. But if Guy's prepared to do that extra commute, they'll both be rewarded in living in a house that takes advantage of this wonderful scenery. Let's see how we go. Our final property takes us to Alston in the east of the county, close to the Northumberland border. 
It's an attractive village set high in the sparsely populated North Pennines, within an area of outstanding natural beauty. Before we have a look at the mystery house, I'm stopping off in the village with Natalie and Guy to show them some of what it has to offer. Now this market town holds the accolade of being the highest market town in the country, about a thousand foot mm. above sea level. What do you think? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Very picturesque. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. You've got all the facilities you need here. Mm. Now, one of the first compromises is the area itself. We're about 40 minutes drive to the M6 junction at Penrith. OK. Yeah? But what a drive, over those Pennines. Yeah, it's mm. beautiful. Beautiful, scenic and, and, and absolutely beautiful. Well, you've got schools here within the town. Mm -hmm. The house we're about to see is just a few minutes' drive up there. OK. So ready? Let's go. Set at the end of a long private driveway and surrounded by miles of gorgeous countryside is our last house. So, we are now very rural. What do we think of hey. looking around a farmhouse? Yeah. It is very pretty. It's also uh, what, something you said you didn't really want to have a look around. Yeah, but we also said that we are very open to you Good. Know, other yeah. things. And I love the setting. What um, do you think about being so close to another property? It has some, some you know, pluses and some... some um, what do you think if I was to tell you that you would own that property as well? That's included. Ooh, so it has lots of pluses, um, I right. would think. OK. Yeah. Good? Yeah. 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 You look freezing. Should we get you inside? <laughs> Come on. Let's go. Both properties date back to 1896. One is the farmhouse where we're heading now. The other was its barn, which we'll take a closer look at later. So, first reception room. Right, it is lovely. It's lovely. Yeah, nice and, and warm and cosy. It is warm, it's, yes, it's... comparing to outside. Now, what do you think <gasps> about the ceiling height? Because I think one of the reasons why you didn't want an mm -hmm. old farmhouse, because you thought it might be mm -hmm. low ceilings and dark inside. Yeah, th these are high ceilings, so yeah. um, good size, good size, yeah. Beautiful fireplace. Beautiful fireplace, yeah. Now, that's a working mm -hmm. fireplace, uh -huh. that wood-burning stove. Next door in the other reception room, currently, that has a dining room, we've got another working fireplace as well. So you've got two reception rooms at the front of the house, mm -hmm. plus you've got an ex dairy room next door, which could be well, anything you want it to be. Let's keep looking around. All yeah. right. So at the back of the house, the kitchen has, well, some amazing views. All right, yeah. Very oh, wow. nice. Wow, wow, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, heard the wow word again, that's yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, three times. Now, as in any farmhouse worth its salt, you get a range, which is electric fired, not oil fired, which a lot of them are. Mm -hmm. And you've got a utility just through that room there, and a loo. Now, you know, make no bones about it, this is no way near as big as the kitchen in property number two. Yeah. But again, how does that nice farmhouse feel? It feels very warm and inviting. We've got, including this kitchen, four good sized rooms on the ground floor, and upstairs is the same, so let's go and take a look. Mm -hmm. They do seem to genuinely like this place, but I'm just not entirely sure it's managed to compete with house number two. Upstairs, the four bedrooms are all doubles, one of which is being used as a guest room come office. And they all share a family bathroom. So this is what the owners use of the master. Yeah, size is good. Good, big, yeah. Lovely window. Yeah, again, it's these views are just yeah. to die for. Now, I'm not entirely sure you'd use this as your master bedroom. The owners chose this because it's the only bedroom up here that doesn't have a fireplace, and they wanted storage along one mm. wall. Yeah. But each of the four bedrooms are of equal size, but the rest of them have lovely future fireplaces right. in. So I think you may want to use the other one next door that benefits from the same view. We may. All right. This is one of the buildings. Should we go and have a quick look at the other one? Yeah, mm. excellent. Even though it's a farmhouse, they don't seem to be put off by the style of this place, which I'm really pleased with. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they make of the barn next door, as it gives them a few interesting options to think about. So, you also get this. Oh, wow. That's a very big, nice space. This is 
uses holiday let, self-catering. This side of the property, three bedroom letting accommodation. Oh. And then, see that door there? Yeah. yeah. You can link it up to the cottage next door, which also has its own entrance, and that is a two bedroom self-contained cottage. Yeah, and this is a business. This cottage sits within a pretty touristy area. You've got footpaths everywhere. You've got a footpath almost crossing over your land here. But you've also got the coast-to-coast -coast cycleway that runs past your property. I mean, you can get around £500 a week for this in peak season. Now, as you're working from home, you may want to use the three-bedder and rent that out, and you keep the two-bedder to run your business from or vice versa. It is a possibility. I mean, it's a good size to do as we wish. OK, well, look, that's something to think about and obviously something to explore later on. Let's go outside and have a look at the land. Yeah, okay? sounds good. Our couple said they really wanted to immerse themselves in nature. Well, this place certainly delivers on that front. They'd be completely surrounded by it here with plenty of fantastic walks right on their doorstep. So, let's talk land. You wanted one acre, yeah? Yeah, possible. You got five. Ooh. So, what are you going to do with all that? Lots of chickens. Chickens, <laughs> chickens <laughs> bees. L lots of chickens, lots of bees. This is the outdoor person's paradise, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's lovely. Let's start thinking about how much do you think this place is on the market for? I would think that it's right at the top of our budget. I would go with £500,000. OK. Natalie? I would think 550 because yeah. of all the business, it can be complete lifestyle. Yeah. Well, it's on the market for offers around £499,000. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Well done, then. Well done, <laughs> yeah. Very good. First off, go back into the main house, have a look at the bedrooms, have a look at the little dairy room as well, it's pretty cool. Mm. But then go into the cottages and have a look at all the bedrooms and maybe I'll have a think about how you'd split it up. All right? Will do. I'll stay out here in the wind. All righty. Oh, yeah. Catch you later on. <laughs> well, they said it themselves, the mystery house has given them a real curveball. But in doing so, I think it's given them something to really think about. Hopefully, something that compares with house number two. A fraction under budget at £499,000, this farmhouse and converted barn give our couple plenty of options. With three reception rooms and four bedrooms, the farmhouse would comfortably fit the whole family, while the barn, with its two self-contained living spaces, could house Natalie's business, provide accommodation for visiting friends and family, and give them an extra income if they decided to let one of them out. It's set in a stunning, very rural location and has five acres for them to play with. All right. Oh, wow. This is a bit smaller than the other one, but it's pretty. Yeah, it's lovely. Beautiful views. Yeah, I'm impressed again. The house is very welcoming, very cosy. You kind of can see family living here. We'll have to adjust uh, style-wise, as we're not, we weren't expecting a farmhouse. And also, it is a bit smaller than house number two, so we will need to decide how much space do we really need. Two separate houses was a big surprise for us because it gives us a lot of flexibility, something to think about. Um, lots of opportunities with regards to what to do with the second property. It's, it's, it's actually very good. Now then, Natalie, have we found a base for your business? There is a lot of room for everything. Yeah, there is, isn't yeah. there? There's a lot to think about. And new ideas as well. Yeah. Good. So, let's find you somewhere to have a bit of a natter amongst yourselves. Yeah. Now then. Well, you've poured a cup of tea for me. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. So, what's the plan? We really do want to go back and see another time, second house. Property number two. Property number two. So, the Georgians beat the Victorians. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It just offers, you know, everything that we wanted and more. So the big gamble with the mystery house, you didn't mind it being a farmhouse so much, did you? No, not as much the style. I think it is still the scale, really. Yeah. And the cottages, wonderful, but thinking more about it. Yeah. We're already doing things 
guy has a job and I have my business and that would be as nice as it is a distraction and I'm not sure if we have enough time energy to do it yeah. well. It sounds really sensible actually. Tell me what is it about house number two that tipped the balance? I think it's a combination of the house itself which is absolutely magnificent yeah. and the size of, of the rooms, the layout, um, what it offers outside with mm. the attached cottage and the, the big workshop, it simply gives us, you know, everything we needed. So um, it's, it's great. It's a good package, isn't it? So, when are you coming back to have a look at it? Um, I'm thinking um, next week. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're not uh, going to um, hang around, we're just going to go for it. Well, good luck with that. And please, whatever happens, do let us know, won't you? Yeah, we will. We'll do, and thank you very much. Excellent. Well, it sounds like Natalie and Guy really fell in love with the Georgian charm of property number two and all the proportions it gave them, especially as a family home. So, maybe the second viewing will just help them fall in love with it all over again. Let's hope so. See you next time. If you'd like to escape to the country in Scotland, Wales, England, Northern Ireland, or even further afield to the continent and would like...